Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss how you can incorporate the color white into your wardrobe, and rest assured, we're talking about more than just shirts and underwear. <laughs> Ironically, white is both one of the most common and one of the least common colors in menswear today. White dress shirts are ubiquitous, and we've already mentioned white undergarments, but white is much less commonly seen today in things like suits, ties, and shoes. Perhaps this is because white shows dirt easily, some people consider it to be on the bolder side, and there are just fewer garments being produced in white today. But we don't think any of these impediments should stop you from wearing white, so today's video will serve as a guide on how to incorporate more of it into your wardrobe. Before we jump into specific styling techniques, though, let's go over a brief history of the color white in menswear. Going back to antiquity, white has always been a favored color for garments in hot climates, such as the Near East, the Middle East and North Africa, and Asia. White is favored for its ability to help keep its wearer cool, and you can learn more about the science behind why from Professor Preston in our video on beating the summer heat in style. Just take a look at that snazzy white lab coat. In the West, however, the color white took on a different connotation. Because it was expensive to dye or bleach garments pure white, and because it was also expensive to launder and keep them clean, white became associated with elites and the wealthy who could afford to do these things. Not only did owning white clothes indicate that one had the funds necessary to keep them clean, but also that they probably didn't engage in any sort of manual labor that might get them dirty in the first place. These associations persisted through the 19th and into the 20th centuries, where white became adopted by elites who would wear it for summer or resort wear. And, by the way, if you've ever wondered why white suits are so closely associated with our perceptions of 1920s menswear today, it's likely because F. Scott Fitzgerald's seminal 1920s novel The Great Gatsby was largely set in the summer, so its characters dressed accordingly. Now that we've got our history out of the way, then, let's next get to when you can wear white today. Thanks to modern laundering techniques, white clothing can much more easily be maintained today, but when is it best to wear white? Firstly here, you may have heard the old-fashioned rule, no white after Labor Day. This was popularized in North America in the late 19th century to ensure that people were wearing their white clothing mostly in the summer months when it made the most sense due to temperature. However, as we already mentioned, it was also somewhat rooted in classism as well, as the wealthy elites were still more likely at this time to own white garments and to be able to show them off without fear of getting them dirty. Furthermore, this old rule wouldn't make much sense for people outside the United States, as Labor Day, or International Workers' Day, is more commonly celebrated elsewhere in the world in May at the start of summer. And yes, it is true that most white garments suit the summer months well, as they're naturally cooling, reflect the sun beautifully, and harmonize with other light summer colors. Thus, many white articles of clothing are going to be associated with vacation settings like cruises, resorts, or the beach, not to mention popular holiday destinations like the Greek Isles, the French Riviera, or Italian locations like the Amalfi Coast or Venice. And while these are all great situations to wear white, we don't think that it has to be hot outside or for you to be on vacation in order for you to enjoy it. Generally speaking, the cooler months are perhaps better suited to more muted hues like olive green, gray, or brown. So, perhaps you could apply what you learned on your summer trip to Italy and practice scorpacciata or savoring the seasons. 
And considering that colder weather is closely associated with rain, mud, sleet, and snow, non-white colors are probably going to be easier to keep clean. But these seasons are also ideal for off-white shades, also sometimes called winter whites, like ivory, beige, or ecru. Just make sure that you keep all of your shades of off-white straight. I'm going up a shade to harvest wheat. I thought the next shade up was buff. It used to be, but they've discovered a whole new color in between. These winter whites aren't as dazzling, but they will harmonize better with the more muted other colors commonly seen in the colder months, and they're going to be a bit easier to keep clean overall. Now that we've covered when to wear white, let's next cover how to wear it with a breakdown of different garments. Firstly, as such a mainstay in menswear, it seems like the white dress shirt probably needs no comment. But it can be helpful to review the essentials, as sometimes the simplest things are the hardest to do correctly. And whether you choose a true white shirt or an off-white shirt, there are some considerations of which to be mindful. Practically speaking, be aware of how sheer your shirt is to avoid any awkward or unsightly outlines. By the way, purchasing undershirts that more closely match your own skin tone can help to mitigate this issue. And on the topic of undershirts, be aware that a crew neck undershirt is likely to show if your collar is worn open, and sometimes even if it isn't. An undershirt peeking out like this is usually considered unflattering, and if you'd like to learn more about undershirts and how to wear them, you can consult our guide on the subject here. Next up, we'll turn to white trousers, which were once extremely common, but have become much less so today. One reason white trousers aren't as popular today is the concern that they're on the bolder side. But of course, if you prefer a bolder look, white trousers were favored by the original dandies as well as the dandies of today. So feel free to embrace that sunny Southern European style. Granted, white trousers may not usually be office appropriate, but they can be remarkably versatile. With the right color pairings, white trousers can look almost as sedate as a white dress shirt. Almost. Olives, browns, and dark blues can considerably tone down white trousers. And of course, white trousers worn with a navy blazer is a well-established look of the prep and trad wardrobes. For more on this constant companion of white trousers that is the blazer, you can consult our guide on blazers here. And while white trousers might help you clean up at Pity Womo, there's no denying that they can be a bit more work to keep clean. With careful steps, though, they shouldn't be much more difficult to keep clean than the other trouser choices in your wardrobe in the long run. A pair of white cotton trousers, for instance, is easier to spot clean than wool or linen and likely won't require expensive dry cleaning. Naturally, some wear and tear is inevitable over time, and minor scuffs, stains, or discoloration will just add some lived-in appeal to your white trousers. But it doesn't hurt to exercise reasonable precautions, so just be careful when you're slurping up that spaghetti, sipping a Chianti, or sitting on the half wall at Pity Womo. And whenever stains do occur, just consult our Garment Care playlist on the channel and you should be good to go. And as a last note here for white trousers, like the white shirts we mentioned earlier, some pairs can have a bit of a transparency problem. This may render your skin and panty line visible. What? Panties was originally a term for men's underwear. It's true. Take it away, Clarence Nordstrom. All right. I'll go home and pack my panties. You go home and get your scanties and away. So just apply the same principles here in choosing undergarments that more closely match your own skin tone. And as for the pocket bags of the trousers showing through, some possible solutions here include lining the trousers to the knee or removing the pocket bags altogether. 
Each of these solutions comes with its own drawbacks, though, as having the trousers lined may impact breathability, and getting the pockets removed simply means you'll have no pockets. So it might just be necessary then to accept a small amount of pocket liner visibility as one of the costs of wearing white trousers. Before air conditioning, white and off-white suits were extremely common for gentlemen as a matter of necessity. Wearing them was an easy way for gentlemen to keep cool in warm or hot climates. In 20th century media, though, white suits would come to be more associated with showy fictional characters, such as Don Finucci in The Godfather Part II, or Don Johnson's character in Miami Vice. And in real life, white suits have commonly been associated with figures like Mark Twain and Colonel Sanders, and more recently, the journalist and writer Tom Wolfe. Wolf made the white suit his signature look while working as a reporter because it helped him to immediately stand out in a crowd. This then brings up an important reality about the white suit. It will get you noticed. Simply put, a full white suit is a distinctive style choice that we feel in classic menswear is best reserved for resort wear, beach wear, or other hot climates. But then again, if you feel like wearing it on Mulberry Street in New York in September, who are we to question the Don? Usually then, it should be easier for you to simply pull off a white or off-white sport coat. As a bonus here, a white jacket will allow you to easily show off the colors of your dress shirt. If you're looking for some inspiration, we're big fans of bold striped and check patterns, as well as pastel colors like blue, yellow, or pink. Do be aware, though, that darker colored shirts can have a very bold effect and might put some people in mind of John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever. Because of the dyeing process, most linen and wool jackets are going to be an off-white rather than a true white, so you can also wear them with white shirts without producing a jarring effect. To emphasize this distinction and really differentiate your layers then, consider pairing your white jacket with a more unique white shirt. Something with a sheen, like Royal Oxford, or something with a subtle pattern or texture in its weave, like end-on-end, -end, twill, or even herringbone. One of our writers here at the Gentleman's Gazette lives in the American South and would love to tell you more about how to wear white suits and jackets well, so let us know in the comments if you'd like a video on this subject specifically in the future. Next up here, we'll cover formal wear. Now, the words white and formal together might immediately make you think of the white tie dress code. But fans of a certain MI6 agent are likely going to have a different first association, the white dinner jacket. For many gentlemen, the white, or more precisely, ivory dinner jacket reached its zenith in the Goldfinger film. Since then, it's been favored for tropical weddings, cruises, and any location where the weather is hot and sultry. Of course, a white dinner jacket can be worn in any location, though it is best suited to the warmer months, and indeed, I've worn white dinner jackets for performances as a jazz vocalist in the summer in the past. You're usually going to find shawl collars employed on white dinner jackets because the organic lines harmonize better with the slightly more informal character of events where white dinner jackets are commonly seen. But while it is generally a more semi-formal jacket, it still looks best in our opinion with jetted pockets, which is a more formal touch. For material, we would suggest a lightweight, breathable wool to ensure the best possible drape. Linen or cotton can also be good options if you appreciate their texture, but be aware that they're probably going to be more prone to rumpling or wrinkling. You can learn more about white dinner jackets in our dinner jacket guide here, and for a comprehensive look at the black tie and white tie dress codes in general, take a look at our guides on the website here.
Next up today, we'll cover white in classic menswear accessories, and we'll start here with the white pocket square, which we believe should be in any gentleman's wardrobe right alongside his white dress shirts. A white pocket square should easily fit into almost any outfit you could put together, and indeed, it's so versatile and important that we put together an entire video just on white pocket squares, which you can find here. The white pocket square will add a clean pop of visual interest and will coordinate well with your outfit, especially if you're wearing a white dress shirt as well. This effect can also be achieved with another elegant accessory, the boutonniere. Commonly seen white flowers include the perennially popular white carnation, the splendidly romantic rose, and the elegantly exceptional edelweiss. We've already briefly mentioned the white bow tie that is obviously essential for any white tie ensemble, but white also appears in slightly less formal neckwear as well. To avoid associations with the white tie dress code, though, white neckties and bow ties worn for day wear should employ additional texture or other color detailing. For example, you'll commonly see silk ties with small geometric motifs or other repeating colorful patterns. Neckwear like this can easily be dressed up or down, appearing more formal when paired with dark-toned wool suits, and more casual when paired with lighter colors, especially in linen. When selecting your neckwear, a primary concern will be ensuring that there is enough contrast between your tie and your shirt. This can be achieved with colorful detailing on the tie, wearing a shirt that isn't white, or by wearing an ivory tie, among other examples. As is the theme with white, though, do be aware of exceptionally high contrast ensembles or of wearing a white suit with a white tie, as this is definitely a bold choice. Just think of Frank Nitti, Billy Drago's character in 1987's The Untouchables. Of course, if bold is your style, go for it. Next up, men of style are often told to avoid white socks, so you might be surprised to see them here. What's meant by this, though, is that you shouldn't wear white gym socks with your dress shoes or other formal ensembles, and we definitely do stand by this guideline. However, white dress socks certainly can make an appearance in a classic ensemble. After all, white hose were the original dress socks. White dress socks can be worn when you might otherwise go for no-show socks or skip-wearing socks, and to avoid any jarring contrast, they tend to look best with lighter colored trousers and shoes. White socks will look especially pleasing with white trousers, but for more visual contrast, you could consider wearing socks that pair white with another color, like light blue. And, as with most socks, we would recommend that you buy white dress socks in 100% natural materials and in an over-the-calf style to prevent slippage. Finally today, we can't very well discuss white socks without also discussing white shoes. Many people, of course, might associate white shoes with fresh white kicks or fancy leather sheikers. But many classic shoe styles are also available in white, especially as summer shoes. White bucks were traditionally favored by American preps and trads, and they remain a versatile style option today. They can be variously styled as Oxfords or Darbys, with or without broguing, and in true white or off-white. And because they're traditionally made from tough white buckskin, any minor scuffs or abrasions will simply add to their character. And as an alternative, two-toned spectator shoes featuring white are a perennial favorite at the Gentleman's Gazette, and you can learn more about them in our video on spectators here. We hope that today's video has inspired you to incorporate white into your outfits in new and interesting ways, and whether it's after Labor Day or not, rest assured that it's all white to wear. By the way, we've also got an article on the website on wearing and pairing off-white specifically, so if you'd like for us to turn that into a video as well, be sure to let us know in the comments below.
In today's video, my outfit is incorporating white in various locations. Most notable, of course, are my white trousers, which are from Brooks Brothers. They're made from cotton, and their inner linings are in off-white shades, so they'll be less visible from the outside. My shirt today is also from Brooks Brothers, and it's a Winchester model, meaning that while its body is light blue, its collar and cuffs are in white. Into those cuffs, I've got inserted our yellow gold-plated sterling silver monkey's fist knot cufflinks from Fort Belvedere, which harmonize well with the gold buttons on my navy blazer, a natural complement to my white trousers. My shoes are in a medium to light brown color, and they're wing-tipped darbies featuring a woven leather design to go for a summery feel. My vintage bow tie also happens to be from Brooks Brothers, and it's in a cream, almost yellow shade featuring very small paisleys. And since we had plenty of discussion about undergarments earlier, I can mention both my navy blue suspenders, which harmonize well with my jacket but aren't really meant to be seen, and my true underthings. Both my undershirt, which is in gray, and my underwear themselves in lightish blue are meant to harmonize roughly with my own skin tone and not be easily seen under any of my white garments. My remaining accessories today are all from Fort Belvedere, and they include my socks, which are navy blue with white clock designs to harmonize well with the trousers and the blazer, my boutonniere, which is an Edelweiss in off-white with subtle blue tones, and my pocket square, which is in white linen featuring a P monogram. As mentioned, this is a classic summer outfit, and one that would go very well with a straw boater, so I've brought one along today as well. And of course, for all of the Fort Belvedere accessories I'm wearing in today's video, as well as a wide variety of other classic men's accessories, you can take a look at the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs> 